It's a goddamn nightmare. I'm living in a fucking hellish nightmare scenario every day of my life. I look in the mirror, I can't tell you how many times I look in the mirror every morning and I go, what the fuck? What the fuck is this? Where's the camera? This guy? Look at this. Isn't this retarded? And I'm only 24. And I feel like it's, it's over, you know? Just quit. You're never going to be successful. No one's ever going to like you. It's hard for people to even look at me in the face. Because they see that and they, and they start gagging. Or it's, they'll be polite, you know? They won't make eye contact. They, they'll just stare at your shoes. And it's like, I know what's going on. I know what they're doing. They're trying to be polite and not acknowledge the elephant in the room. This incredibly horrific recession going on in the corners of my hairline. I don't know. shave your head, yeah, but then you look weird as shit too. You could get on uh, Propecia, but then there's all kinds of side effects with that. There's really just no solution, and it's all terrible and stupid, and I just want to give up. Well, Gene is not only my brother, but he was my best friend. We went everywhere together. And I'll never forget the day that everything changed. I came home and I went in the bathroom and I noticed in the shower that there were hairs around the drain. And it was right then that I knew. So I collected them and I put them in a Ziploc bag. And I confronted him and I said, what is this? You can tell me or you can tell the cops. I'm serious. And he had no choice but to fess up. And that's when I immediately called our parents and uh, discussed the whole thing. And it was pretty soon after that that our family cut ties with him. His friends stopped talking to him. I stopped talking to him. And his girlfriend, Valerie, left him after that, and rightfully so, you know, she did the right thing, we all did the right thing. Uh, excuse me, I'm here for my 6 o'clock appointment. Okay, name? Uh, Gene. I all right. to come here. Alright, 6 o'clock. Gene, your, uh, appointment will be in the first room on the left. Okay. I'm just, uh, I'm gonna have to ask you to take the hat off, and you're uh, good to go. I mean, if it's not a big deal, I'd rather just keep the hat on. Oh, well, it's not a big deal, but we have a lot of we have a lot of bald guys trying to sneak in here, you know? Right. We can't have that. Right. I mean, I would... Come on, man. Just let me keep the hat. I, so, I'm not... I don't want to say anything. Just, just let me... I could lose my job, okay? And I'm not going to let that happen. I love my job. And I love putting food on the table for my family. So if you could just leave it. We have a hat check box, it's very professional. I mean, what if I was Jewish? She wouldn't ask me to take my hat off if I was Jewish. Are you Jewish? Well, no. But... <sighs> it's exactly what I thought. Yeah, Jerry? Yeah. Jerry, we got a stage no, no, three. You don't, you don't have to do that, please. Just, I just have to. Nothing past a stage three, buddy. I'm, this is clearly a two. This is slightly more than a two. Slightly more, Dr. Phil? I, just, just let me go back there, please. I wish I could. I wish I could. But this isn't the Bosley Hair Clinic. This is Axiom, okay? Man, I, I need this, okay? You know Your what job you need? is bullshit. You need some Rogaine. That's what you need, Mahatma Gandhi. Huh? Let's get out of here. Door's there, Moby. I don't need this. Hey, Vin Diesel. How about you get out of here? <sighs> See you later, Rogaine. Oh, man, uh, I remember I came home one day after work and they were all sitting around in my living room. Like all of my family, my mom, my dad, my grandparents, my brother, 
And there's some guy in there, his, his name was Dr. Gary Penn or something. And, you know, they said, we're sick of the lies and the deceit, the bullshit, and the embarrassment. And I'll never forget, my dad stood up. He looked at me square in the eyes and he said, son, do you have any idea how ashamed I am of you? Do you know what you've done to this family? So it turns out it was an intervention. And it was an intervention not for me to get help, but they wanted me to leave. Uh, Gene? Yeah, yeah, it's me. Oh, hi. Hey, hey, Gene. Oh. You're Dr. Uh, Dr. Norwood. Dr. Norwood, yes. I've heard so much about you. Yeah, right? Right. This way, please. Okay. Have a, have a seat on the couch. Are you coming in? Yeah, sorry, don't worry about them. They're uh, filming me for a documentary. Okay, this is very unusual. I usually like to meet one-on-one -on -one with my clients, but um, especially in a case that seems to be this severe. So, tell me, Gene. Why are you here today? Why am I here today? Yes, why are you here today? I didn't know where else to turn. And I saw your ad uh, in the uh, bus station bathroom. Yeah. My family has deserted me. Everybody I know has turned their back on me. And I'm pretty sure it's because my hair's falling out. And you can't notice it, right? I mean, you no. can't. No. Maybe a, a little, but I mean, nothing, nothing too serious, right? I came here today because I, 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 look, okay, I'm really depressed. I, I need some help. I need some guidance. I feel like everything's just falling apart or out, falling out. My hair's falling out, really. And quite frankly, I just want some antidepressants. Some antidepressants? Yeah, like Zoloft or Cymbalta. I'm gonna... I'm just gonna level here with Eugene. That is not going to help your situation. I mean, but I, I'm depressed, so I need antidepressants. What you need are hair plugs. I'm kind of worried about you, Eugene, from what you are telling me. Sounds like you are rather depressed. Have you had any suicidal thoughts? Yeah. Yeah, I've had a lot of suicidal thoughts. Okay, good, good. It's good to know. You've come to the right place. I, I really would like to be able to help you. I just, uh, you never seen a, a case this bad before, and so kind of you talking about taken my, back. You're talking about my depression? I'm talking about your hairline. My, my hairline? Yeah, it's, it's terrible. I try to live a normal life, you know, as much as I can. I realize that I fucked up. I'm not perfect. I've made mistakes. And my hair falling out is just one of many, but I'm still a good person, I think. I don't know. I, I, I should ask for forgiveness, I suppose. Well, I think it's very important to remember anytime something like this happens, that baldness is always a choice. And baldness isn't just merely disgusting. It's actually morally wrong, too. I was a theology major in college, and I can tell you that any religious doctrine, be it in Hinduism, any sect of Christianity, Judaism, or Islam, all of their holy books specifically prohibit, have strong disgust for any kind of baldness or recession. It's one of the major sins in any religion. Even Buddhism has principles that guard against baldness. It's a disgrace and he's, he has brought shame to us all. You know, I, I'd like to forgive him for what he did. And my family wishes we could forgive him for what he did. But we can't undo it. He will always be my brother but he will also always be bald. I think this is it.
So, um, this is where I moved all my stuff. After I get kicked out, my landlord evicted me when he found out I was balding. Apparently, he had a rule in the contract that said um, no tenants are allowed to bald or thin during their, their residency there. So, I fucked up. I, you know, I didn't know the rules, but now that I know, I understand why he had to let me go. I've actually spent a couple of nights in here. It's pretty cold, but it's better than sleeping on the street. Well, I've been living in almost complete destitute poverty for the better part of two years. I've been struggling day in and day out to feed myself. I haven't been able to get a job. No one will hire me with this hairline. Rock bottom for me was I was living at a campground by myself. I uh, didn't have a tent. I was living on a picnic table outside the women's bathroom. Got pretty cold, real cold. Uh, taking what photo albums I had left and burning them fire because what's a lifetime's worth of memories compared to one hour of really good fire even the Red Cross turned me away so I realized that I had to do something and I reached out to my family I reached out to my brother and I told him that you know I've got a new wig and I'm making a change like I'm, I'm, I'm really gonna make a change this time and I, I promised him that. And he said that if I was legit, you know, if the story about the wig was true, then maybe we could talk. This one has not been as popular, but boy, was it expensive. Um, I think it has a natural appearance. And I noticed that I really blend in in a big crowd like this. It has that natural wave to it. Um, you know, that I've grown accustomed to in the years past. But uh, this is, this is my let's go get it done wig. You got a lot of nerve coming here. I know, I know. Can I please come in? I don't know. Please, Tom, I have to shit so goddamn bad. Did you bring a wig? Yes, I brought the wig. I'm legit, I told you. Please, I'm about to shit in my pants. All right. Oh, thank you so much. I've had nothing but expired yogurt for the last six weeks. So, Tom, I, I just want to say in front of you and all these people that I'm really glad to be here, and I'm so, so sorry for what I put you through and what I put the family through, and yeah, I've lost a lot of hair over the past year, but I just hope that I haven't lost you, because living out there, I learned that it's not the hair that, that matters, it's, it's family. No. That's what matters. No, it's the hair. That's what matters. Well... Regardless, I just, I want you to know how much it meant to me when you said, I need to come over. I said, you need a comb over. Are you going to put that wig on or what? 